So we finished putting in our images and adding any titles or effects that we wanted to add. We're now going to move on and work with narration and motion. So if you haven't already done so, from the titles screen where it says add a title to your pictures, click next and you'll come to this screen. It doesn't look very different, but it is very different. So we have a couple of options here. The first, under our picture, we see this customize motion. That will allow us to add camera motions to our movie. I'll show you what that looks like, and the best way to do this, in my opinion, is to click here on Preview. That'll open the little preview of the movie. And what PhotoStory does is it adds uh, kind of default motions to the pictures, and most of them work quite well. So I tend to um, watch it once through and make note of any camera motions that really don't work well. For example, if it pans down to somebody's shoes and that seems really bizarre, I'll make a note of that one and then go in and change it. Um, any others, I'll leave the same. I don't want to have to do this manually for every single one. Okay. So if I see one that I want to change, I click here on Customize Motion. And then I'll just show you how this works. This first image has no motion on it. And we know that because the screen here on the left looks the same as the screen on the right. If I click here, specify start and end position of motion, you'll see that these little handles appear around the images. So maybe I want to zoom like this. Okay so that it starts out small and then ends up big. Do you see that? So the parts that are in kind of bold color is where we're starting here, and then bold color here, that's where we're ending up, all right? So that's something we can do, and we do need to save every time we make changes. We're not gonna mess with the duration in here because we are adding narration in this particular video. Uh, we're we're going to allow the length of our narration to set the length of the display of the picture. But if we were not adding narration, or if you wanted a picture to be on the screen for an extra amount of time beyond the narration, you could come in here and set the exact time it's on the screen. Now another uh, thing that you can do in here, if you come up to the top, we're on the motion and duration tab, but there's also a transition tab. So you can add transitions between each of the pictures as well. And you can kind of look at what that would look like. Okay, so you can see what the transition would look like if you were to do that in your movie. And again, you can leave it automatic or you can set the number of seconds on the transitions. You can preview what you've done, etc. Don't forget to save your changes. And then when you're all done making these, Click close. Now this is where we go in and record our narration. I'll give you a preview of what we're going to do. If you want to, you can copy in the text that you're planning to read for this picture here in this box. Otherwise, you can have your script kind of off to the side, ready to go. We are going to click record. And then what we want to do is wait just a second, kind of for the microphone to activate, if you will before we start talking. And then when we finish the narration for this picture, stop talking and wait for just a second. What happens is the transitions will delete some of the sound. So if we're talking when we click the button to the next picture, part of our narration will get deleted. So we want to wait to start talking after we click the record button, then begin talking, then click the next button. So it would look something like this. Spanish is a very exciting language to learn, and I encourage you to choose it for Lakeview's dual immersion program. Spanish has a rich cultural history. OK, so did you see how I started the record button, waited to start talking for just a second, did my spiel, stop talking for a second, then click the next button. That's what I want you to do to get yourself all the way through your narration.